Hey, what's going on, guys? Today I'm going to talk a little bit about charred punk wood. My opinion, charred punk wood is far superior over char cloth every day of the week, simply because this is a renewable resource. Char cloth is not. You have to cut up your shirts, your pants, your socks, your underwear. Um, this, you do not. This, you just walk out and you find it, you char it. Char cloth, you have to use a tin. This stuff, you do not have to use a tin. And today I'm going to show you how to char this without a tin. That way, and I hope that you guys will stop cutting up your socks, stop cutting up your wife's dish rags, guilty. Uh, give this a try, you guys will like it. Okay, as what I have here is I have two fire pits, and that's simply because I just got done shooting another video, and that video was on a um, self-feeding fire versus a regular TP style fire. Um, go ahead and give that a look. Uh, it's pretty informative, guys. All right, so first thing I'm going to do is knock over the camera. Second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open that ash bed up a little bit. I'm going to break up some of this chunks or chunks of punk wood and I'm going to throw it in there. Now just like an Altoids tin, you'll notice the smoke starting to roll out of these things. I do not want them to catch on fire. If they start to catch, I'm going to take it right off, flip it. Gonna be flipping these over like you would a steak or a hamburger anyway. Now there's other methods of doing this. This is just mine. No one method is correct. Some might be a little bit better, but there are many ways of doing it. Like I said, this is just my method. Okay, now once I got the outsides good and charred, I'm going to pull them off the fire. And I actually have a 
bed over here. Well, if you can see it on the camera or not. Train going by down by the railroad tracks. Actually, it wasn't a train, it was one of those little trucks. Anyway, I've got a shallow grave dug right here, and I'm going to transfer those bits of punk wood over into it, and then I'm just going to cover them up and smother them out. Just like that. Now I have effectively made a tin. So let me sit this, or let me let these sit for a little bit, and I'll get back with you guys. We'll uncover them, see if we can get them to take a spark. All right, guys, let's go ahead and uh, pull it out of the dirt and see what we got. Okay, now I don't want to handle these too much with my hands because it's hot out and I've been sweating and I don't want the moisture getting into them. So let's get out my uh, flint and steel and see if we can get these things to take a spark. Okay, so many of you guys have seen this. This is a new uh, companion pouch that I'm making and this is where I'm currently keeping my fire kits and things like that. If you guys are interested in one of these things, um, I have a video on them, as well as there's going to be a link at the end of this video on where you can find them. But anyway, inside I've got a couple Altoid tins, fire kit, and this one here. Uh, I'll give you a hint, it does not contain char cloth. It does, however, contain charred punky wood. So, let's get my steel out of here. I have a little baby piece of shard of flint in here if I need it, but I found a couple pieces of chert on the railroad track on my way here, so I'm going to use those instead. Okay, and here's our pile of charred punk wood. I have crushed it up just a little bit. So, let me go ahead and see if we can get a spark to fall on one of these pieces and cause an ember. Okay. Blow on it and see if you guys can see that.
there you go guys that is how you char punk wood without a tin saw that it's not that hard not difficult at all and we effectively got a fire going with that method people have been doing it for thousands of years so like I said at least give it a try put the char cloth away give it a shot you guys will be shocked at how easy it really is so as always have a good one guys.